The Patterson Foundation strengthens people, organizations, and communities by focusing on issues that address mutual aspirations, foster wide participation, and encourage learning and sharing. Welcome to Beyond the Block, a podcast of the Patterson Foundation. Hi, I'm Kiara Lewis, the Patterson Foundation's Initiative Support Coordinator, and your host today as we dive into the DeSoto County Ahead Initiative, specifically the Harwood Institute's Catalytic Guide Program in DeSoto County. Today, I had the pleasure of being joined by Maritza Coscarelli, who since 2020 has worked with the Harwood Institute for Public Innovation as a lab teacher, a community researcher, and a certified coach for multiple community initiatives. And she even founded Mar- Mar- she even founded Maritza Coscarelli Coaching in 2015. Maritza, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much, Kira. So nice of you and the Patterson Foundation to have me. It is certainly our pleasure. But Maritza, before we talk about your work at the Harwood Institute, I'd really like for us to take a step back in hopes that you can give us a brief overview of what the Institute is and how you got there. And I think how you got there will be interesting, especially since your background is that you were a former professional ballet and a contemporary dancer before you became a certified coach. And at first glance, they couldn't seem to be even more different. Yeah, and it's not disconnected, but I'd like to start with the Harwood Institute because we work as one team and we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit uh, institute that helps to bridge divides and helps communities create their own change and work as a common enterprise. Thank you so much for for sharing that to give some background to our audience because we know not all of them will know what the Harwood Institute is. And so how did you even learn about it or get the get into working with the Harwood Institute? Yeah, I think it's an interesting story, not because it's about me, but because it's about all of us of how things happen in our lives, how things unfold, even in communities. Uh, There's a little bit of serendipity and also the way things tie together. And sometimes we don't see that until hindsight, right? They say hindsight's 2020. So I was working as a coach already in my own business, as you mentioned, uh, doing life and leadership coaching for women, mature women, or I like to call us women in their prime uh, that are in transition in their life or career. And that's where my focus was. It was a focus on, um, the keys that I had found through my life and work that were the keys to self-empowerment. So that's what I was doing at the time. And in order to do that, well, I had started to focus on my public speaking and leadership skills. And I did that through a very well-known organization, an international organization called Toastmasters International. You may have heard of it, Kira. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, through that organization at a conference where I spoke a few words, I met a gentleman uh, and he turned out to be Rich Harwood, the founder and president of the Harwood Institute's brother. Fast forward literally a couple of years time, and in 2020, I received a phone call. It was a very kind call uh, saying, how are you doing? Because remember, that was the pandemic. We were all on lockdown, and um, Steve had become a bit of a friend. And he said, my brother has, I don't know if I've ever told you, the Harwood Institute. They are looking for a coach. Currently, they would love to have someone who's bilingual and who is already certified as a coach in other realms, has some experience. And I told Rich, being his brother, I know just the woman, are you interested in knowing more? So I went, but I did go through a very um, rigorous application process where I read Stepping Forward, one of Rich's books, and I answered questions at length. They asked for, you know, short essay type answers. And I did a couple of interviews with others before I met Rich. And that's how my work there began. And I began as a researcher. A researcher at the Institute is someone who goes into communities with curiosity, knowing that we don't know anything or not a whole lot other than maybe what's um, what research we can do beforehand about a community. And we go in uh, to do community conversations and interviews with different types of leaders in a community to find out what people love about that community and also what challenges they're facing and what change they'd like to see happen. So I started that way as a researcher. Thank you for, for sharing that. It's interesting how one connection can lead to the domino effect of future connections and, and opportunities. Thank you for highlighting that. You did mention, you know, a lot people, people, people. 
And something that stood out to me as I was preparing for this podcast that I saw on your website is that you mentioned that one of the reasons you do your coaching work is because you love people. Specifically, you mentioned that, in fact, I'm crazy about people the way some people are crazy about their dogs. I love helping people develop into the next version of themselves. And that includes you at a high level, because we're going to be going into details lately. How does your work at the Harwin Institute allow you to help people develop into the next version of themselves or even communities? But how does the Harwood Institute and my work with the Institute help us develop people and communities, basically, uh, which is making a connection between the work I was doing and the work that I do now with the Harwood Institute. They are really connected. Um, the Institute's work is a philosophy of putting people first, right? It's a philosophy of civic faith and putting communities and what matters to the community first, uh, as opposed to what we see in, um, we're not consultants, for example, nothing against consultants, but consultants tend to put their ideas first. So they come into something, some consultants may debate this, but as I see it, they come into something and they have an idea and they want to impose something that they've seen work somewhere else, maybe upon people. And I think when I start with love, it's because I start with deep affection and empathy for the fact that we're all human and we're humaning, I call it, right? So we are doing things as best we can with what we know. And when we know better, we do better, right? Uh, thanks to Maya Angelou, one of my iconic mentors, I call her. Short answer to your question is not everyone who does this work loves people and they'll be the first to tell you like even some of my colleagues, and that's cool, but that's the foundation that I begin from, is that at the Harwood Institute, we see what's already going well in a community. We see the true potential of people. And I and the Institute believe that the solutions that you're seeking are within you and within your community. And it's just a matter of shedding light on that and beginning with what you aspire to, with a community's aspirations, as opposed to our typical way, which is looking at problems first. I think when we look at what's wrong with us, there's nothing wrong with us, right? We're humans. We're naturally organically good at some things, not great at others, and we're all learning. I think we have to start with what do we aspire to as opposed to what's wrong with us or what's the problem somewhere, which could be um, the typical way people try to address things. Thank you for mentioning that. And I'm going to bring up a couple of TPF isms that I, I felt like I heard come out as from what you were saying that once again shows me where the alignment is when it comes to the Harwood Institute and the Patterson Foundation and why we continue to work together so well together. One of the TPF isms that we often say here is that we do not arrive with the answer, but rather we arrive with the process of discovery, going back to not wanting to arrive to a community telling them, this is how you should be working. This is what you should be doing, but working together to find the solutions and aspirations that will truly work with the community. But also instead of focusing on the issues, let's focus on the aspirations and how we can work together to get to those aspirations. And it's quite amazing how those shift in philosophy or mindset can be very impactful. Absolutely. And I think that you're absolutely right that between TPF, the Patterson Foundation and the Harwood Institute, there was already a lot of alignment in not just the philosophy, but also the practices. One of the things I noticed right away about the Patterson Foundation as I came to the community and got to know how you all work and now how we work together as partners was this propensity for action. So the philosophy is really important and the mindset does uh, introduce and, and create different behaviors, the shift in mindset, but then it's really important to take what we're learning and what we hear and do something, right? So I love when Rich Harwood says specifically about DeSoto County and our work along with the Patterson Foundation is people were already getting together, but what we need to see is people working together towards a shared aspiration or aspirations and shared purpose with a shared purpose. Thank you. And to give our audience some additional context when we're talking about the partnership between the Harwood Institute and the Patterson Foundation, I will share that TPF has worked with the Harwood Institute for Public Innovation since 2012. And earlier this year, they partnered again together to bring additional resources to the DeSoto community to empower it to navigate issues with new perspectives and build stronger, more effective collaborations. 
And part of that partnership focus, focused on DeSoto County was offering the Harwood Institute's Catalytic Guide Program, which is a 12-week intensive program for community members who desire to guide their community to create lasting change using the Harwood approach. And so Maritza, as a certified coach, how would you describe the Catalytic Guide Program to someone who has never heard of it? Yeah, that's a great question. So what is a catalyst I'll start with, right? So why do we call it the Catalytic Guide Program? And we see it as this individual is somebody who's understanding the philosophy of keeping people and shared purpose in our line of sight, this philosophy of civic faith. And then they're understanding the Harwood's orientation, posture, and practice of turning outward to us and to all of those who travel with us alongside us doing this work. Turning outward is the idea that we turn to the community, believing that we want to know what matters to the community, what challenges they see, and how they want to approach uh, one another, right? How they see one another, how awake they are to what's around them uh, in the community, including resources. So that's the turning outward idea of our work. And then we have a, a practice and tools and frameworks about how change happens and a way of thinking about how change happens. And it comes from 30 plus years of experience in communities. Rich Harwood founded the Institute when he was a mere 27 years old. I'll let everybody do the math and now he will be happy with me. He founded the Institute then, but has continued to innovate and create what you see today and what we know about how change actually happens as opposed to how we try to force or make change happen. And in the center of all of this approach is how you, how each individual, how you, how I, how all of us show up. And I love that you uh, shared the philosophy of the Patterson Foundation, which aligns so beautifully. And it's showing up knowing and believing that people are capable and that there is capacity. There are already existing relationships, existing organizations and networks. And when those are strengthened, those we call the civic culture of a place, when those are strengthened, a lot is possible. In fact, I like to say everything is possible in terms of addressing the fault lines that we see in communities around the nation and really around the world. Thank you. You truly are uh, what we like to call a TCF, Marissa, a possibilitarian, exploring and knowing that there are an endless amount of possibilities to be explored out there. And it, we know that we have had five plus DeSoto County residents and some who are currently underway about to start the program who have participated in the Catalytic Guide program. And I'd like to read a few quotes from at least one person who has participated sharing about the value of what it was like to participate in the program. And that is Amanda Reuter, Executive Director of Hope DeSoto Long-Term Recovery. And she said that the value of participating in the course is receiving a quality, professional, and relevant education in leadership and civic culture. Since taking the course, I have been much more thoughtful in how I conduct board meetings with the Hope DeSoto Long-Term Recovery Group and how I show up to other meetings in small groups of which I am a part of. So once again, taking Amanda's comment, what goes into the classroom or what goes into the coursework of a catalytic guide? So what goes yeah. into it uh, from a participant's point of view, I think, because I have participated in a coach certification program that was similar. So what goes into the program is 12 weeks of commitment. We are delivering it virtually at this time. And those are two hour sessions where you understand not just the approach, but how change actually happens, the tools and frameworks that we share that are merely the tactics in order to get the work started and done. And our whole philosophy for a guide in particular is not only that they take hold of the philosophy and the practice and approach and put it into action, but that they help guide other people to do that. That's a whole other layer of the program. So I love Amanda's comment that it not only developed her own leadership and how she shows up, which is the center of it all, right? But also that it helps her to be more intentional in her board meetings and more clear about what she is wanting to achieve or build or create at uh, her organization. And that's one way that catalytic guides can work with what they learn in those 12 weeks. So they can work to develop themselves personally 
they can bring this into the organization or team or practice or initiative for the sake of the Patterson Foundation that they're already working on. And then as we progress through this partnership, that is a longer term partnership, the guides will be instrumental because uh, there will be teams forming to address some of what we found out in our research in DeSoto County, along with Patterson Foundation. And when those teams form, the guides are not coaches, right? They haven't done the rigorous longer term training and they haven't had experience coaching other people, but they are people who can like the coaches, similar to the coaches, walk alongside folks and help them keep applying the practice and the approach that they have learned and practiced. They can walk alongside people and keep reminding them to come back to those fundamentals and to use the tools and the philosophy and the practice to help move things forward in a deeper way, in a more accelerated way, so that we're working with a similar, not just mindset, but similar behaviors and tools that move things forward. But I like what you said about walking alongside the people in the community. And this might already sound obvious, but what's the difference between walking alongside the people in the community versus walking in front of them? Hmm, that's such a great question. And I think it's a question about one's belief about leaders. So early in our conversation, I said that in research in a community, we interview leaders and I kind of put a caveat in there of different types of leaders. So we tend to think of leaders by status, by title, by level of education, and all those things are true, but there are leaders in communities that are leaders because they are trusted by the people in their own community. They are leaders because they're not afraid to innovate, to think and do things differently. And they may not have the highest level education or the title in an organization, but they are still leaders. And therefore, going back to this very good question about how does it differ to walk in front of people and lead them from the front than to walk alongside or sometimes even behind them. And I say sometimes I even kind of disappear into the background intentionally, because when we do that, you use the word empower earlier. And you saw how it aligned from my private practice to the Harwood Institute, to the Patterson Foundation's philosophy and work. And so we walk beside folks because we believe in their capabilities and we believe that they know their community best. I don't live in DeSoto County. And I probably, as much as I have affection for the place and the people will not be moving there anytime soon. And so we, with great respect, leave people with their dignity and empower them to say, nobody knows the place like you know the place that you live in. And different voices are important because different people have a different lived experience in DeSoto County itself. And so that's why we use this term about walking beside or alongside folks so that folks can step forward. Thank you. And I, based on the comments that I continue to hear from those who are learning about the Harwood work and the TPF work in DeSoto, I think that is something that has definitely been emphasized or that was clear to them that the Patterson Foundation or the Harwood Institute is not coming and telling you what to do with your community or coming with the mindset that we know more than, than you do about your own community. And I think that has been so, so appreciated and that level of respect and empowerment that we want to, knowing that you know the most or more about your community. We want to empower you to be part of making it even even better and making all the things that are special come come to light. So thank you for emphasizing things, emphasizing that and know that is definitely appreciated by the residents and the organizations in DeSoto County. As we wrap up our conversation, Maritza, for those who may not have the opportunity to be part of a public innovators lab or who may not have the opportunity to be part of the Harwood Catalytic Guide Program, what are one or two things you they can start doing now or keep doing to make a difference in their community? Oh, I love that question. So first of all, I just want to highlight that you mentioned a Public Innovators Lab. And I want to say for those listening that might say, what's that? We are coming to DeSoto County uh, now in January because of the hurricanes that were suffered. We cared enough not to cancel it, but to postpone 
uh, further education of the folks there in the Harwood approach because we respected that people needed to get their lives together and or are taking care of and helping other people, which is what's so beautiful about your community, right? People love living there and they're tight knit and they take care of themselves and they take care of one another. And we've seen that time and again. So the Getting Started Lab will happen in January and that's an introduction to the Harwood approach and practice. Uh, and we will be doing it live in person at the Turner Center, and it will be two day a two day commitment, and it's open to anyone interested in contributing to the community that way. Um, the catalytic guide program we've already talked about, and that's a step deeper into the work, and that requires a little bit more commitment uh, because it's those twelve virtual sessions. But there's also a huge payoff because I think whenever we learn something deeply and or teach it and then guide someone else. We say that to teach or guide is to learn twice. It's what I love about coaching. Every time I'm coaching, it's I get the payoff of not only being next to someone and helping them, but I help myself understand something deeper or different about human behavior and about community change. Back to your question, which is a person who doesn't do the Public Innovators Lab or the Catalytic Guide Program, how can they contribute? And I think one way is to ask themselves that, what is my contribution here? And not measure it by power, monetary amount, uh, higher education, but what can I contribute to move forward an aspiration that I have for this community? Um, rather than looking outside, uh, uh, we do want you to turn outward and see what the community cares about, but then we want you to come back and reflect and say, well, then what's the implication for me? If the community cares for our youth to be more engaged and to have more situations where they can come together and they can have open conversation and they can feel safe to create things, then hmm, that matters to me, okay? So youth in particular matters to this person, then their next question can be, what can I contribute? It could be as simple as some time to have a conversation and ask a young person, what are your aspirations? What kind of community do you want to live in? And what can we all do about that? It's simpler than we make it sometimes. That is very true. And Marita, is there anything else that you would like to highlight that perhaps we didn't get to touch upon as we wrap up our conversation? No, I think we've touched on a lot of things. And I think considering the timing of when this podcast is being recorded and when it will go up for people to listen and see it, I would say that uh, DeSoto County and uh, Arcadia and the whole area of DeSoto is resilient and is a caring community that already has um, begun this work long before we came along and we'll continue it long after we're gone. But what we hope is that our work with the Patterson Foundation and in DeSoto County will strengthen the fabric or the civic culture there and grow civic faith so that whatever we catalyze, whatever begins to change as a result of this work will continue to flourish for many, many years and generations to come. Thank you so much, Marisha. Once again, thank you for making the time to join me today. Listeners, to learn more and stay tuned, please visit thepattersonfoundation.org.